Welcome back, everyone. I am getting married today. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting married, but this is a wedding makeup look courtesy of my friend and makeup artist, Nikki LaRose. Today, we're gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to get a wedding makeup look like this. In my opinion, it is one of the best makeup looks when you go for something that's natural and a little more subtle, but just a, a little bit glowy and romantic too. Yeah, it's soft, it's romantic, still kind of sultry. It's all of my favorite things, and I'm gonna be showing you all my favorite tips and tricks on how to layer your makeup properly for longevity and how to really enhance your features for your wedding day. Before we get started, I just wanna thank our sponsor, Sephora. All of the makeup products that we're gonna use in this video, you can purchase in store or online at sephora.com. I'm also going to be wearing a new Gucci lipstick mm. that I love, so we'll tell you all about it. All right, so, Wedding day makeup. Yes. I got married 10 years ago, officially. <laughs> My husband and I are celebrating our 10 year wedding anniversary this year. And it's kind of wild to think back and if I could get a redo of the day. One of the things that I would probably redo is my hair and my makeup. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, mm. you know, I think a lot of people don't realize, and I obviously was one of those people, you want to kind of look like more like yourself on your wedding day. Yes. You don't actually want to look like a whole different person. No. Yeah, and I went for a whole different person look. Right, you had your hair up, um, you had a super smoky eye. Mm -hmm. which I, I mean, I've, I've never seen you with such a smoky eye. Yeah. And that's actually something that I see a lot of people do, and I see it's like a common thing that people regret later on. They look back at their photos, and they're like, well, you know, I look pretty, but I didn't really feel like myself. And then it's always like, well, I wore my hair up and I never wear my hair up. So I wasn't used to seeing my hair like that. Mm -hmm. Or I wore this bright lipstick that I'm not used to wearing. And I think it's so important for a bride to remember who you are, mm -hmm. <laughs> what makeup style you feel confident in, and to stick to that, but more of like an elevated version. So yeah. bump it up. You want to still stick true to like who you are and like how you feel confident. If that's wearing your hair down, have your hair down, but maybe bump up the curls more. Just taking your hair and makeup look that you feel most confident in and just elevating it a little bit more for your wedding. Mm -hmm. And also just making sure it's going to last. Yes, which we'll get into that. I have so many tips and tricks on how to layer your makeup, how to properly blend it and how to set it so your makeup does last for your wedding day. As you can see, Susan's brows are already on. We already did that off camera and their skin is prepped. So now we're gonna get into the fun part. I'm gonna start with Susan's eyes, but before I do that, I'm gonna take a light layer of the foundation that I'm going to be using for her makeup look. And I'm just going to buff that on with the beauty blender first. And this is gonna give it a nice cohesive base for when we apply our eyeshadow on top. I Typically recommend that you do your eyeshadow first, especially for a bridal look, because that way you can really get in there and blend out your eyeshadow and not have to worry about fallout. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. So I'm gonna take on a fluffy, a small fluffy brush, a little bit of the foundation, like I said, that I'm gonna use on Susan later after we're done with her eyes. I'm gonna start to just pat this onto her eyelid. So this is just a nice simple step to make sure that's gonna be cohesive and there won't be any gaps in the foundation. It's like you're gonna connect the dots later. Exactly. So normally with Susan's makeup, I usually just prep her eyes with a concealer and then I set it with a powder for, like I said, minor tweaks. So we're going to tweak it and we're gonna use an eyeshadow primer for once, which we really Ooh. rarely do. This one's from NARS. This is a smudge proof eyeshadow base and it's tinted. And I'm gonna work this at the base of her eyelid where we all tend to get a little more oily. So now I'm gonna take one of Susan's face powders that we're gonna be using later on, and we're gonna use this to set her eyeshadow base. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in the shade one. This is just, I mean, like, I can't live without these powders. So taking another large fluffy brush, same motion, I'm gonna pat it into her eyelid, locking that eyeshadow base and securing it in place. So my next product is a little embarrassing because I love it so much that it's, it's kind of broken. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. I, I cannot get rid of it. I can't get out of my kit. I can't bring myself to buy another one because it's perfectly fine. This is a Marc Jacobs bronzer. This is the 102 Tantric Omega Bronze. I've been using this bronzer for years now and it's just one of my all-time favorites. So I'm gonna take a blending brush. This is gonna be like her transitional color, her depth color, and like the starting point for her eyeshadow. Starting in the outer corner of her eye. It's gonna look really sheer at first and then we're just gonna keep building on that color and building it up to the density that we want. And so I'm also gonna take whatever's left over in my brush, which is not a lot. 
I'm gonna lightly blend that into the inner corner of her eye, almost along the side of her nose as well. I love this trick. And then just straight up towards the inner part of her brow. This is just gonna create like a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of depth, but in a really natural way. I'm also taking a little bit of that bronzer and you'll notice I'm gonna start going outward towards her temple. It just kind of elongates that eye and really just kind of pulls it out. And like I said, elongates it, makes it look bigger. Okay, so now that that base is on, we're gonna move on to an actual eyeshadow palette. We're gonna be using the Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette from Charlotte Tilbury. This is like, when I think of bridal eyeshadow colors, this is almost, to a T, what I would picture. So starting with the lightest pink matte color, same blending brush we used earlier. I'm gonna start to work this color into her crease, blending it all across. So still just blending that first light pink color into her crease and outer corner. And you'll notice too, like I'm focusing all that color mainly on the outer corner of her eye. And that again, just to go back to our theme, that just kind of bring out her eyes and make them look elongated and bigger. So I think pink is a color that a lot of people would not think to reach for, for eyeshadow. And go for a neutral pink. This is a very soft neutral pink. It's almost like a blush tone. To me, I think this is very soft, very elegant. So now I switch out my brush to a smaller blending brush. This one's just a little more precise and I'm dipping into that second darker color in the palette. This is like a deep mauve brown. And I am, I'm almost doing like a sideways V. So I'm cutting it into her crease about halfway and then I'm cutting it straight down towards her lash line, going halfway across. So now we're gonna take the more shimmery color in this palette and a small flat brush. This is more of like a shading brush. So I'm gonna do more of like, almost like a halo effect for her eyeshadow. So when you're looking straight ahead, it just, the light picks up that shimmer right in the center and it almost gives your eye like a very like ethereal, romantic, it's a really pretty look, you'll see. Rather than going super heavy and like packing this eyeshadow color all over her actual eyelid, just keeping it focused in the center, it's gonna make her eyes look more round and it's also gonna give her more of an open eyed effect too, which in photos is gonna photograph beautifully, especially for a wedding day. Okay, so to deepen slash add more drama, I'm actually gonna be using a darker face powder. This one is 5N Neutral. This is a Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder. This is obviously a setting powder, but I'm gonna use it as an eyeshadow. So going back to that sideways V action, I'm gonna start layering this color in the outer corner of her eye and just slightly into her crease. Okay, so now that that's on, we're gonna start her eyeliner. I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay 24 seven Glide On Pencil. This one's in Double Life. This is a beautiful shimmery brown, like a bronzy brown. I love that it has shimmer in it because it's kind of like a softer way of doing an eyeliner where it's not super harsh. And then I'm gonna go back in later on with a liquid eyeliner and deepen it a little bit on the outer corner. But this is gonna be our starting point. It is waterproof or water resistant, so it's more cry proof. <laughs> so I'm starting this on the outer corner of her eye getting it as close to her lash line as possible so there's no gap. And when you're using a pencil on your wedding day, you wanna make sure you're looking for things that say long wear, water resistant, sweat resistant. Urban Decay and Makeup Forever have pretty much the, in my opinion, the best waterproof pencils. So before that dries down, which it will a little bit, I'm gonna take a really small blending brush and I'm gonna start to create a wing shape. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tight line Susan's waterline, the top waterline. This is another waterproof pencil. This is one of my all time favorites. This is a really deep brown. This is um, the color Two Ebony. These pencils are amazing. They, you can cry with them, you can jump in a pool. They might run a little bit if you jump in a pool, but <laughs> crying wise, you're fine. They're not gonna go anywhere. You can see that makes a big difference with her lash line. It makes her eyelashes look more dense and fuller in a really natural, subtle way. So we're gonna go and intensify this look just a little bit more. This is Susan's. I love this liquid liner. It's from Benefit. It is the Roller Liner in Brown. This is a gorgeous liquid brown liner. I'm gonna hold Susan's eyelid so she can't blink. <laughs> and I'm just pushing this sideways into her lash line. I'm not going like this and trying to get a straight line. I'm laying it flat and I'm really being careful to just almost like stamping it. You're stamping it on. 
So now I'm taking a Q-tip, a pointed one, which will be your best friend if you're trying to have a nice sharp liner. These are amazing. With some micellar water, and I'm just gonna have you look straight ahead for this part. I'm just gonna clean up that edge. So now I'm gonna go on with one coat of mascara and I'm gonna go back in after I apply some false lashes. This is gonna be like our base for our lashes to kind of sit on. We are using a waterproof, even though you're not, it's not actually your wedding day. You're gonna hate me tonight when you're taking this off. But this is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. This is an incredible formula. This has been like talked about for ages. It's, yeah. I'm sure everyone knows it's amazing. Well, this is why I double cleanse, oil cleanser for the win. Yes, you'll need that oil cleanser for this for sure. I'm gonna wiggle it at the root of her lashes. This will give them an automatic lift too. So for lashes, I'm gonna do um, kind of our favorite thing, which is individuals. I'm gonna pop those on and then we're gonna get to the rest of the makeup. Lashes are on. And now we're gonna go in and do a little bit of the bottom lash line. I'm gonna take that same eyeliner we used earlier to map out her wing liner, the Double Life from Urban Decay. So this is the bronzy liner. Yes. And I'm really just doing a touch of this. So now I'm gonna take that same brush we used earlier to smoke out her lash line. We're gonna kind of mimic that same wing liner effect and we're just going to bring it halfway across her eye. If you bring it all the way in, you're gonna close up your eye shape and you're gonna make your eyes look smaller, especially in photos, your eyes will look kind of small. We're gonna go back in with that Omega bronzer from Marc Jacobs. Before I finish this other eye, you can already see the difference. We're just opening that eye even more and creating like a bigger eye effect. And you can see too how that brush just really does the blending for you while shading at the same time. So going back in with that deeper shade in the Dior face powder, I'm taking that same small blending brush and I'm buffing this on just the outer corner of her bottom lash line. So I do this all the time. This is one of my favorite techniques and this is something you should always keep in mind when you're doing your eyeshadow. To keep it cohesive, whatever you use on your top eyelid, bring it back to the bottom. Going back in with Double Life Eyeliner. Going back in with her eyeshadow palette and another brush, that same color that we use on her eyelid, and I'm just going to apply a small amount on the outside portion of her tear duct. By placing this color further out of her actual tear duct area, it's going to widen her eye even more and create a bigger eye effect. So her eyes are, for the most part, done. There's gonna be some minor tweaks in the end, which we'll get to. But for now, I'm gonna start on her face. I'm gonna start to pre-contour and warm up her skin before I apply your foundation. This gives it more of a natural effect and it's almost like uh, you're pre-sculpting. And then when you put your foundation on top, your features are just gonna pop even more. So I'm taking the cream bronzer from Fenty. This is in 05 Teddy. So I'm not trying to contour Susan. I don't like to contour you. I like to warm you up. Buff that pretty much into her hairline. So I'm focusing this on the high points of her forehead where the sun would naturally hit her and give her like more of a golden hue. So I like to go higher with contour and bronzing products just to kind of bring those cheekbones up and really lift and bring the features up. I don't like to go too far down. Um, a lot of people make the mistake, in my opinion, of going right where that hollow is. That's where they start the bronzer or the contour. And then once you start blending it, it ends up down your jawline. Mm -hmm. So. The higher up you start, the better off you're gonna be because you're gonna end up blending it up rather than down too far. And if you start too low, you're just gonna bring your features down and you don't wanna bring your features down, you wanna bring your cheekbones up. way up. Always make sure you bring that into your ear. It's gonna feel very weird and you're gonna have to wash your ears at the end of the night, but it's worth it because you won't have white ears on your wedding day. I'm gonna bring this underneath her jaw and just kind of sculpt her jaw just a little bit. So now I'm gonna reverse lip line Susan's lips. And this is gonna look a little crazy at first, but trust the process. Same cream bronzer and a small shading brush. I'm gonna create a darker shadow underneath her bottom lip. And by doing that, you're making your bottom lip look larger. And then straight above her cupid's bow. That's a really stiff brush too. Yeah. So now we're gonna take that same Dior foundation that we applied earlier on her eyelid and we're gonna start her foundation. So I'm gonna take the foundation and then a little bit of the Dior Universal 01 Backstage Face and Body Glow. This works hand in hand with the foundation that we used. It's a liquid illuminator, it's super lightweight, it's really sheer and it's not super intense where it's like a disco ball on your skin. It's very soft and subtle. By mixing it into our foundation, and this is also gonna come down to preference as well. We love glowy skin, so this is kind of like 
you know, if you want to really go for it with glow, add more to your foundation or add some on top, we're gonna add about equal parts to our foundation right now as our starting point. I'm gonna start her foundation on the center of her face and then just blending it outward. You'll have much more of a natural effect. So this foundation will dry down to like a semi-matte finish, but since we'd added that liquid illuminator, it's gonna look a little more glowy than it typically would. And for the areas that I want more coverage on Susan, I'm going back into the foundation and instead of swiping it and really blending it, you'll see I'm pressing it in. So now that Susan's foundation is done, we're gonna go with concealer. This is one of my favorite concealers for an all day wear. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. This is a self-setting concealer, if possible. I still think that all concealers need to be set no matter what, but this one definitely does a lot of the work for you as far as setting goes. It does dry down, so you wanna blend it up pretty quickly, but this is amazing. You could definitely cry. If you set it correctly, it's not gonna streak. It's amazing. I'm gonna start this right in the inner portion of Susan's eye. And you'll notice that I'm bringing this straight down the side of her nose. And this is gonna to help to kind of contour her nose in a very natural way. And then whatever's left over my brush, I'm just draping it across her under eye and then bring it straight up towards her temple, creating a lift effect. I'm gonna highlight the very top of Susan's chin, which is gonna to help to bring it out and then straight in the center of her forehead. I love this concealer also because it's a smoothing formula. You can see right away when it goes on the skin, it has like a smoothing blurring effect. So I'm gonna go back in with a small flat brush. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that concealer. Well, what is this that we're doing? This is gonna highlight the bridge of your nose. Mm -hmm. And since we already have that cream bronzer underneath, this is gonna help to just it's kind of like an easy way of just contouring your nose in a very like natural way. And now we're gonna let that set itself and do its thing and marinate while we buff out the rest of your concealer. I'm taking a clean beauty sponge. These are old school, but they're tried and true. I love these, especially if I'm like really trying to get into nooks and crannies. Sometimes a beauty blender can be just too big. So I'm taking the flat end of this makeup wedge and I'm gonna start pressing that concealer that we applied into her skin. I'm not swiping, I'm not moving it around too much. I'm really just pressing it down. And again, this is a great tip for longevity with your makeup, especially under your eye. So we're gonna take that same makeup wedge. We're gonna go back in with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush um, Powder in one. So I'm gonna take a small thin layer of this Charlotte Tilbury powder first as my first setting powder. And the reason for that is because this powder is extremely smoothing. It's an HD powder, so it's gonna photograph unbelievably beautifully. It's gonna be amazing in videos as well, but it also looks great in person, which again, very important. Make sure you're looking all the way up, that way you're not setting any folds into your eye. So pressing it in, going up towards her temple where we did bring up that concealer. So now we're gonna go in with a cream blush. So I'm taking a Jouer Blush and Bloom Lip and Cheek Duo. These are so gorgeous. I'm gonna be taking the color Parasol. It's like a shimmery, kind of on the peachy side, pink. It's really pretty, it's really romantic, it's really soft. And I'm gonna, on a clean hand, I'm gonna warm this product up and really work it on the top of my hand. And by doing this, it's prepping it, instead of going in cold turkey and like swiping this on her cheek, if we did that, it would literally lift up all of her makeup, her powder, her foundation, all of that. I've done I've done it before. It's so a very I... common mistake. So by putting it on the top of my hand, my skin right now is already warming that product up and it's gonna make it more like pliable. So now I'm working that cream blush into more of a dense stippling brush. This is the best way to apply a cream blush. Try it, it makes it foolproof. It's also gonna make it long lasting because we're gonna take that and we're gonna really pack it into Susan's skin. It's gonna look like I'm going really high with this blush, which I am, <laughs> but that's kind of my thing. I like really high blush because if it's too low, it's gonna bring your features down. And I love this too on the temple. There's nothing like a soft blush along your temple. It's so healthy. It looks so gorgeous in photos. Try bringing your blush all the way up here, especially for your wedding day. Game changer. I love sweeping a little bit of that blush across the forehead and across the nose. It just gives you such a healthy, beautiful look. 
and it really helps to balance those colors together and like marry everything together so it's all cohesive. So now that Susan's creams are all applied, we got her cream bronzer on, we got her cream blush, we're gonna go in with our powders and really seal and lock it in. So I'm gonna take the ultimate setting powder. This is a loose translucent powder from one size. Ever since I got this, I use it on everyone. It's such a phenomenal formula. You have to try it, I highly recommend it. First of all, it's very neutral. It's not too yellow, it's not too pink, but this powder has such an amazing blurring effect. This will just seal your makeup down. It's incredible for baking but also really help to like minimize the appearance of pores or fine lines and really gives you a smooth effect. So it's gonna photograph extremely well. So just like I warmed up her cream of blush on the top of my hand, I'm gonna take a clean hand and I'm gonna warm up the setting powder in the palm of my hand. I always ask my clients, do you mind if I pop this in my hand? It's gonna give it a great effect. And nine times out of 10, they're like, of course. This is also a great trick for you if you are doing your own makeup. Yeah, oh my God, this is this is how I put all my powders on my face. I dump it in my hand, I let it marinate and warm up in the palm of my hand. It's like the best trick. So now I'm gonna switch to a beauty blender for this part in particular. And I'm just gonna work that powder into my beauty blender. This was pre-dampened. Don't use a dry beauty blender. If you're gonna use a beauty blender, make sure it's damp. Now I'm gonna start to really set Susan's makeup. So I'm just gonna press that into Susan's skin. I'm gonna pinch my beauty blender, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna get the sides of her mouth straight under her lip line. I'm gonna get right in above her lip. So now I'm gonna take another bit of powder in the palm of my hand again. We're gonna go back to that square makeup wedge, and now we're gonna cut Susan's cheekbone. And by cutting, I mean, we're just gonna highlight that area and bring it out just a little bit more. Using her outer corner of her bottom lip as a guide, I'm taking that powder, bringing it straight up and really bringing out that cheekbone. You can look straight ahead and see the difference. And we're only gonna let that sit for a couple seconds. The longer you let it set, the more dramatic it's gonna be. So I'm gonna work quickly. We're gonna bring that powder up high and just give her a nice lift. So now I'm gonna take a fluffy brush that has nothing on it yet. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the color two. And I'm gonna use this to dust off that baking powder. And by blending it with a powder, it's gonna soften it even more but still kind of maintain it. So now that her setting powder is completely done, I'm gonna go in with our Omega bronzer like we used earlier, and I'm gonna use this to set her cream bronzer. Taking a small, a little bit more dense brush. So taking it just on the high points of her forehead, and it's gonna feel like I'm dumping makeup into your hairline, which I pretty much am. Again, for bridal makeup, it's all about pressing it in and longevity. So we're gonna really pack that bronzer in rather than just being loose and buffing it. I'm staying really high with this powder bronzer. I'm not bringing it down too low. I'm not bringing it onto the apples of her cheek. Even though we do have a little bit of cream bronzer there, we're gonna end up setting that with the blush. The more I'm gonna set that jawline. So now we're gonna finish her mascara. Now that her eyelashes are totally dry, do not skip this because it's gonna blend your lashes with the false ones. It's gonna help to blend them together so you don't see where like the falsies start and where your lashes end. It's gonna be undetectable. And for individuals, I don't like to get mascara on the tips of the lashes. I really like to keep that nice and soft. I don't want them to be spiky or too dramatic. So I'm gonna focus that mascara at the root of her lashes and just blend her lashes into the falsies. So taking more of the waterproof mascara, I'm gonna take a really small, flat shading brush. I'm literally just working this into the root of her lashes. And I'm not bringing it down. I'm not using a spoolie because that would be too big and I wouldn't have as much control in this small area. So now your eyes are almost officially done. We're gonna go in with her blush. This is the powder blush that I mentioned earlier that I was going to use to set her cream blush. This is such a gorgeous neutral color. It's not too pink, it's not too bright. I love subtle blushes and subtle tones on wedding days. I don't like anything too dramatic and too pink or too bright. This is Fresco from Laura Mercier. We got this recently we love this color. Same technique, I'm gonna press that into her cheeks, bring it across her nose, dust the excess product on her forehead, just straight across it. So this is something I've had for a while. I pull this out for any time I like want that extra little like 
jazz. So this so is this is not my everyday. This on is YouTube not. Look. No, absolutely not. So this is actually a highlighter, but it's something that you can use all over. I absolutely live for this on the eyes. There's something about it that's just like it's magical. You'll see. It is called How Many Carrots, which is very fitting for a wedding. Yeah. How many carrots? And it's uh, from Fenty. And I'm going to take a clean fingertip. This actually works best, in my opinion, applied with a fingertip because once it's again, it's going to warm it up. It's almost like like a moussey texture, but it's a powder. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing formula. Highly recommend it. I'm going to hit the very center of Susan's eye. And in photos, this stuff just looks, it's magic. It's still subtle enough that it's like, oh, wow, that's really special. Yeah. It should be special on your wedding day. Like mm -hmm. this is what jazzes it up. So now going on to a powder highlight. This is a Dior Nude Skin Luminizer. I love this highlighter. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush. So I'm gonna pop this just on the very highest point of her cheekbone. It's gonna look like I'm almost placing it under her eye. That's how high I'm going. So when that sun hits you or that photographer hits you with the flash, it's gonna pop and look so beautiful and so glowy. I'm gonna squeeze my fluffy brush and make it a lot smaller. I'm gonna hit the very top of the bridge of her nose. This is my all-time favorite spot to highlight. I love this. I think it looks so gorgeous in person, on camera, in photos, you name it. It's gonna help to bring balance to your nose rather than just going straight across, which actually will make you look very oily in photos. This will just be a beautiful, soft way to highlight your nose. And then I love a little bit on each side of her chin. So that way when she's got her profile shot, it's all the right high points of the face. I'll always take a little bit, pop it on the collarbone, squeeze together my brush to make it smaller and more dense. I'm gonna run that along her cupid's bow. Not too much. I don't want her to look like she has a sweaty upper lip, which is what we don't want. <laughs> no, so and now, I did. On my wedding day, I definitely had a sweaty oh upper no. lip. Oh no, yeah. So that is her overall look. Her overall makeup is done. Now moving on to such an important part, which is the lips. And I always say that for last for obvious reasons. I think people don't consider the lipstick or they don't think about the right things when it comes to lipstick for their wedding day. This is probably, besides like maybe your powder, mm -hmm. like this is probably one of the only products that you're still reapplying because you might yeah. be eating, you might like try to drink something. Like After you might- first cheer. kiss. Yeah, first kiss. Yeah. There's all these things that come into play with your lipstick. Mm -hmm. And I think too many women, first off, if you're getting like a makeup artist to do your makeup, you just rely on the makeup artist mm -hmm. to put a lipstick on you. Right. And then you don't have that lipstick with you the rest of the day. Yeah, so that's such a huge mistake. It's such a huge mistake. So yeah. I actually think even if you have your own makeup artist that day, you should buy your own lipstick. So you can even work with your makeup artist ahead of time and be like, okay, well, let's figure out what color mm -hmm. I'm going to get, what lipstick yeah. I'm gonna get. So this is a conversation I always have with my brides. I say, okay, we need to try on some lip colors. We need to get on the same page. Age. We need to work together and like find a good formula, find a good shade. And that way either I'm purchasing it for them and they're buying it off of me or they're purchasing it ahead of time. So that way they have it on hand. And that's so, so important. If there's one piece of makeup that you have to have with you, it's a lipstick. Yeah. You don't want to have dry, cracky looking lips. You mm -hmm. don't want to, you know, you're talking at your wedding. You're yes. like, just like having conversations with people. You get dry mouth. You yeah. get like that cr like white You get that line. line. If it's too dry, yeah. you get that weird line. Exactly. Know, like you don't, good. you do not want that. So I mm -hmm. understand the thinking of being like, I'm going to go with a hard, like a hardcore liquid yeah. lipstick. Something that doesn't but, move. Yeah, but that's not yeah. the way to do it. And and Nikki has an amazing trick that I've always learned from her about layering. Again, it always comes back to layering. Yeah, but there's I will a common say, theme here with this makeup look. They're layering. Really yes. Layering. And the lipstick that we're going with is by Gucci. First off, can we just take a second to appreciate it's, how come on. cute so this pretty. is? So, so pretty. One of the things that I really like about this lipstick is that it looks like a balm. When you put it on, it's kind of sheer actually, yeah. and it feels really, really nice on your lips. You feel like you're wearing a lip balm with the lip liner. Step one, so crucial. And obviously we prepped her lips off camera too. We already had like a conditioning balm on beforehand. So her lips are already hydrated. That's also very key. Start with hydrated lips. If you need to exfoliate on your wedding day too, I highly recommend that. I always have a lip scrub in my kit for brides because sometimes your lips are chapped. So this is a very neutral tone lip liner. It's a nude lip liner, which, you know, again, like comes down to preference. You can use whatever lip liner of choice, but for this look, we're doing a soft, more nude tone. So since this is more of like a light neutral lip liner, 
I'm gonna take this lip liner and I'm gonna actually trace all inside and outside her lip and really use that as a base. So I'm gonna start by lining Susan's lips and then I'm gonna start to shade it inward. Rather than going in like this and getting a hard line, I'm just gonna lightly shade and by tilting it to the side, it's gonna evenly apply. And this won't feel dry because like I said, her lips are already pre-conditioned earlier. And then we're putting that balmy, more hydrating lipstick on top. So you won't have to worry about your lips feeling dry even if you have lip liner all throughout. If I was do getting a redo of my wedding day. You would choose a softer lip. I would choose a softer lip for sure. You know, I always hear women say like, I bought this one nude lipstick that you recommended and it didn't look good on me. And I'm like, well, did you wear lip liner underneath? Because yeah. it really is setting yeah. that shade and that tone underneath. Yep. And you wanna make sure that your lips stand out for yeah. sure. You wanna balance this. We've got our lip liner on. I know that now I'm going to have color on my lips mm -hmm. for a really long time. Cause lip liner doesn't budge usually on your lips. All right, so we're gonna go in with the Gucci Rouge de Beauté Brilliant Glow and Care Shine Lipstick. Ooh. This lipstick is amazing, not just so on your pretty. wedding day, but it's really, really nice for the wedding day because I feel like this is also a little like treat yourself. Oh yeah. And, and also use your lipstick after your wedding day situation mm -hmm. instead of buying like just a lipstick that's only gonna get used yeah. on your wedding day. If there's ever time to treat yourself with a nice lipstick, it's your wedding. Absolutely, you want to, and it's, it's something you're gonna pull out, so it's gonna yeah. be kind it's of It's almost fancy. like an accessory, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it gives you this wet glow finish to your lips because it's super, super hydrating. It has different oils in it that really help to condition your lips, and it also has hyaluronic acid, which we know we love. It's a humectant, it's very hydrating for your skin, and even on your lips. Mm -hmm. It even has fruit butter, so it just feels really, really nice on your skin. So you're getting that glowy type of look to your lips, but it's not that lacquer look. Yeah. So let's put this on okay. and show everybody what it looks like because it's so pretty. It's kind of sheer, but again, we have that lip liner underneath as a base. Yeah. So it's just gonna be easy to reapply throughout the day because it feels like you're putting on lip balm. Yeah, and it is buildable. So you can, just like with the foundation, start with sheer layers and build it up. So we're gonna start with the first layer. And this is in the color Call It A Day. And it's just the perfect, like subtle, natural, more like romantic lip color. So I am layering it. And since we have that lip liner base underneath, you'll notice I really don't have to be like super precise. I can really just get in there and pop this on top of her lips rather than like going in and being super precise with like a lip brush. I can just pop it on and layer it. So you'll notice too, same technique as all the other creams. I'm gonna stipple it in <laughs> for a little bit more longevity and a little more color. And you can see it has that really pretty shine to it. Yeah. It looks really healthy. If I were to kiss my new husband, it wouldn't feel like to him, like he suddenly has this huge layer of glossy yeah. red lipstick or something, yeah. like bold lipstick on his face and stuff like that. It would just feel really nice. It feels like I just have lip balm on my lips. Now the final, final last step is to set your makeup. This is very important. This one is something I bust out only if I'm on a beach and I'm doing a photo shoot or if I'm doing a wedding. This is the Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face Waterproof Setting Spray. Resting Boss Face. And it's, it's really intense. And I always warn my client, after I'm done setting you with this setting spray, I warn my client to keep their eyes closed for at least 10 seconds after the fact because it is intense. It is meant to waterproof your makeup and to really seal it and lock it down. So do not open your eyes right after you apply this because it's not gonna be pleasant, but it does the trick. So shake it. I also love this comes in an aerosol spray because it's gonna be more of a fine mist rather than like the ch -ch -ch sprayers right. that can be a little like, you know. Yeah, it might they be can a get you sometimes. Yeah, blotchy. sometimes they can like, just kind of like throw water at you. <laughs> this would be you like a, a hairspray. Exactly, and you have like a drop here and I'm like, oh gosh. Keep your eyes closed. Right, I'm gonna start way up high. Stay closed. And so that is our finished bridal glam. <gasps> Look how pretty, no, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. So that is my wedding day makeup look, my do-over. Your do-over do -over. glam, yeah. yeah. This is for sure a look that you can do whether you are the bride, whether you are a guest at a wedding. I still think that you're trying to go for a very similar type of look. You're looking for yeah. that longevity as well. And of course, make sure you pick up this lipstick by Gucci. It is so beautiful. Even if you're not getting married, it's a beautiful lipstick. It's a lipstick. great lipstick, yeah. yeah. That's a great everyday formula. I love the way that feels on. And it's 
this is a great color and they have so many good colors to choose from. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask us in the comments below. You can find Nikki on Instagram, makeup by Nikki LaRose. I'm there. And I'm at Susan Yara. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.